Hello, I'm Frank Caruso, producer of Oregon Life, and welcome to a brand new episode. We are visiting the iconic Kopke's Greenhouse just outside of Oregon. Josh will take us on a tour. We'll talk to Gordy a little bit, and we'll visit with Sam, and you'll see all those three and much more in this episode of Oregon Life. I do want to say that I'm so proud of Kopke's for supporting the Badger Honor Flight, as you will see coming up. It's uh, something that I'm very passionate about as I went on a journey to Washington, D.C. with our veterans to honor those. Uh, the other uh, thing I'd like to mention always is uh, Tour Horse Insurance is always there for us, producing episodes like this and beyond. And if you would like to be a sponsor or donate in any way, uh, there'll be a link below to visit our donation site. Send an email to Paul's Wicker, and there is a link for that as well. So enjoy this episode, Kopke's on Oregon Life. Hi, I'm Josh Smith, uh, co-owner of Kopke's Greenhouse, and uh, welcome. Uh, just to uh, tell you a little bit of a story about this place, uh, back in the early 80s, uh, my stepfather, Gordy Kopke, uh, bought this farm on a handshake, and uh, from there started growing veggies in the fields, and slowly, over time, uh, when he started growing flowers, um, it just got more and more popular and uh, more and more people realized that uh, not only he but the people he was hiring were growing some amazing stuff here and uh, gosh we've all fallen in love with doing this over the last 40 plus years so uh, welcome and uh, I hope you enjoy a little bit of a tour of this place. So Let's go check it out. Here we are at uh, essentially our checkout building, the front end of our uh, shady house. This is where all the uh, registers are and uh, once we go through this door I, I hope you'll be treated uh, to what goes on here uh, at Kopke's before we open for the season this year on April 18th. So let's go check it out. So here is uh, our checkout area of Kopke's greenhouse. This is where all the, uh, where most of what people see actually happens. We've got our registers and tags and seeds and things up here. And um, this is where you're gonna, this is one of the last stops, gloves, all kinds of things. Um, this is one of the last stops that most of our customers experience before they take their beauties home with them to plant or put on their porches and decks. Um, but there's so much more that happens prior to this. Um, and we'll take a look at that. You know, when Gordy first started this, it, it basically started off as a field full of veggies. Um, this was all fields when I was a little kid. And uh, slowly but surely over time, uh, with some encouragement from his mom, Lorraine, he started growing a few flowers, some hanging baskets, uh, some trays of things uh, for his mom. And uh, he discovered very, very quickly that uh, a lot of this brought a lot of joy to people. And uh, it wasn't easy to do, but um, it certainly was a little bit easier than growing veggies all through the spring, summer, and fall and having to harvest at the end of the year. And what he found was that people really loved this. And uh, it got very popular very fast to the point where one greenhouse became two, two greenhouses became four, and on and on and on. At this point in time, we now have 33 greenhouses that we grow in. Isn't that amazing? And um, every single one of them is gonna be absolutely full uh, by the time we open uh, in mid to late April. And um, it's just, it's wild. Because in 12 weeks, they'll all be empty again. So we really, uh, we're blown away every year by the reception that we get from the community and the reception that we get from all of our customers. So stepping out of our shady house, as it were, takes us over to um, our area outside where we have our veggie house here, where we sell a ton of uh, peppers, tomatoes. I think we have over 30 different varieties, possibly more. I can't keep track sometimes of tomatoes, peppers, and so forth. Uh, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, lettuce, strawberries. Um, this area here that looks a bit askew uh, will eventually be filled with perennials, uh, hard goods, um, petunias along the wall. Um, and as we kind of walk through here, we're heading towards our blooming boulevard. And uh, you will recognize this better uh, in the spring when it's chock full of all of our most beautiful planters and flowers and, and uh, just the, the really neat stuff. And this year we're actually doing a little bit of a cool event where we're doing a hard goods walk. And so BAM, my retail manager, is setting up a bunch of neat displays with all of the different unique things that she finds traveling around the country. So, and there's a lot of it. So we're really excited. This is gonna be the first time we've ever done something like that. Hey, there's Bam right there. 
<laughs> so she goes around the country finding all kinds of neat stuff for us. Plus, she also runs our retail. So she is a very, very busy woman. Uh, and uh, this place would not run without her uh, up here. So it's, uh, it's an amazing thing. But uh, yeah, this, you're welcome, Pam. <laughs> I mean it when I compliment them. But yeah, tons of cool stuff for, your, for, for the gardens, uh, your backyard, anything gardeny or, or like that, just that's what we kind of love. From the Blooming Boulevard, we walk into our sales house, and this is the building where we have uh, the majority of our uh, sunny plants. Um, what you can see on the tables right now is a lot of the plants that we get from our young plant growers, both here in Wisconsin and Michigan and Iowa. And uh, all of these come in as little plugs, and then we transplant these into the soil, various baskets, planters. Uh, we've always got crew working on these things. And then for a lot of these things, this is where they're going to live from now on. On these benches you see right now are tons of soil filled baskets for the hanging baskets that we do. Um, and the plugs that are going to be put into those baskets. And uh, you can see a guy in the background there, Rick, that's our head production manager. Uh, he is busily trying to coordinate all of the various plantings and designs uh, that we come up with every year and uh, get it all planted in such a fashion that by the time Mother's Day rolls around, uh, everything is at its peak growth, peak bloom. And uh, hopefully uh, when folks come in, they just see an amazing amount of color in here. Um, it looks a little weird when it's empty like this. We hear that a lot. Boy, it sure looks strange. And yeah, even to us, it looks a little odd because this is what we see most of the year. Um, we only see the beautiful stuff that everyone sees for a few months, just like them. Um, but yeah, these tables are going to be uh, just amazingly full of stuff. Uh, the salvia that, that we're looking at right here, uh, this stuff will be a few feet tall by the time uh, we uh, really get going here and open for business. So here at Cop Keys, I've been tasked with integrating a IPM program in order to control the pests we find in our plants. This includes using natural occurring BCAs or biological control agents, anywhere from fungi to bacteria, parasitoid wasps, mites, and uh, other bugs. So these predatory insects are released uh, via spreading every week. That's anywhere from taking loose fill, putting in a blower, and spreading them out over our crops to uh, placing banker plants throughout that uh, will continue to release these. Um, sometimes there's hot spots that will get uh, something like a lacewing larva, which is, will hunt out and kill 200 aphids within its life cycle, or um, aureus, which likes to go out and hunt out thrips. So I can place that on a hot spot where I have a lot of bugs, and those, those bugs will pretty much clean up those bad bugs. We are able to uh, achieve this through uh, weekly scouting, uh, going through the crops, making sure there's no pests that can be found, um, and if this, something is found, is marked down, kept in uh, for later for a reaction, whether that be putting a hot spot insect um, or a spray. So we get asked, why do we want to go through and uh, in integrate this kind of program within growing here at Cop Keys? And the biggest reason is to protect the consumer um, and everyone else that comes around in contact with these flowers. Often the chemicals that are used are broad spectrum and harm pollinators, or animals, or anyone else that uh, could stumble across it. So we feel that by us taking that stance, hopefully it's gonna create that domino effect for other garden centers around the follow. And uh, yeah, I think that kind of sums it. So uh, what we're looking at right now is the soil filling process, which uh, basically we have to do for everything that we plant. So we've got uh, bags and bags of uh, soilless potting mix that we use, and that goes up this uh, little uh, corn elevator that we rescued into a big dirt mixing machine and then down into a flat filler. From that point, um, guys like Isidro and some of our other folks come in and sit, uh, put the trays through and the hanging baskets through the machine that fill and level the soil and then those get popped out and put on a cart or put on a tray and off to one of the buildings that we uh, have been looking at or one of our greenhouse buildings where we start transplanting all of the plugs uh, for, uh, for growth and hopefully uh, get them up to size for sale. Hi, I'm Gordy Kopke, uh, proprietor of Kopke's uh, greenhouse here outside of Oregon, Wisconsin. And um, I, I started the greenhouse business originally back in 1980 when I built my first building. And with the idea of I was going to grow uh, transplants to 
grow food for farmers market. And uh, we did that a few years, and then uh, my mother, who was an avid flower gardener, convinced me that I should grow some flowers in addition to the uh, regular vegetable plants I was growing and selling at the market. And um, it, uh, the light bulb came on when the people would come up and, and buy my flowers. They wouldn't even ask how much they were. Uh, they just, it, it was a different sensation for them. When they were buying stuff to feed their belly, they were concerned more about the price. And when they were buying stuff that fed their eyes and their soul, they were uh, less, it, the price was less important. And uh, so we started selling plants retail here in 1984. And I can remember uh, the first day that we were open, we had two or three cars in the parking lot. And I thought, wow, someday if we get 10 cars in the parking lot, we're going to be a huge success. So. Uh, from that time on, it's grown way beyond my wildest imagination. Uh, we now have uh, over four acres of greenhouse production, and currently we have about 25 people working in production. And when we go full on retail, we'll have over 100 people working for us during the month of May. And uh, we are the largest um, greenhouse operation in Wisconsin that grows our product and sells directly to the public. There are a couple of other operations that are larger acreage wise, but they sell wholesale only to uh, grocery stores and such. But we are uh, have set a very unique um, position in the marketplace to, to sell directly to the public what we sell. One of the really exciting things that we do here at Kopke's uh, occurs every late May, just before Memorial Day, this year on May 26th, right around 3 or 4 p.m., depending on the weather. Uh, we do a live auction for Badger Honor Flight, where we auction off all of our display planters that we have throughout the greenhouses that customers can see and use for inspiration. We don't sell them to the public until we get to the Badger Honor Flight thing. Now, uh, in previous years, it's grown and grown and grown to the point where we have live music, uh, we have brats going all weekend, all all of the donations for the brats go to Badger Honor Flight. And this last year, we raised about $16,000 for Badger Honor Flight. Overall, we estimate the program, uh, we've sent about 100 vets on that flight. Uh, and we're really proud of that. And we're just really happy to, to, uh, to be able to send folks to see those memorials that were set up in their honor. Next on Oregon Life at Atria Hall in Edgerton.